Our four night stay at the Yaye homestay has come to an end. Um, we are now going to be travelling up to a town called Sankulaburi, which is very close to the Myanmar border. Um, we can't cross the border if we were going into Myanmar from there, as no Western tourists are allowed over that particular border crossing. So we've, there were a few options on how to get there, and we've chosen the, <laughs> the public bus no aircon or anything but hey it's all about the journey not just the destination so we've been dropped off on the side of the road um, in um, where are we? Nantok <laughs> Nantok <laughs> dropped off at the side of the road in Nantok and we're keeping a lookout for a red bus to come along which we wave down and from what we've read it's about a four and a half to five hour journey there's plenty of stops along the way so we've got our food, the time is now 9.30, not sure what time it's due through, I don't think there is actually a timetable. I think there's one that comes through every hour but we're not too sure whether that's on the hour and whether that's Thai time, <laughs> normal time. So we'll see. Thoroughly enjoyed our stay in um, Nantok, would recommend it to anybody who wanted to do Hellfire Pass and to um, really get a feel for the area and to um, really discover um, the death railway from right up to the end of the track where it stops so that was our um, biggest target for staying here and we definitely ticked that off the list so bring on the red bus we're at the very flash bus station as you can see nothing but the best but what can you expect for a hundred baht each which is about two two dollars New Zealand about two dollars New Zealand each for a five hour bus trip. Don't know where we put our bags. We'll Don't know where up. we put our bags. Don't know anything. Don't know. Hey, our bus is alright. <laughs> we made the bus. Uh, it does have Sankula Murray on the windscreen, so we're pretty confident that we are going to get there. open somewhere but no aircon we're not with the tourists with the locals um, but that's all good there's room for our bags and he even helped me on the bus with my bag can't complain about the service service has been good so far So what we've worked out with a little bit of handwriting on a guy's hand, we are stopped here for about 10 minutes for a um, pee stop, um, a food stop and a rest for the driver I think. Um, so I bit the bullet, never let an opportunity to go by, use the toilet. Oh I've been in worse. Have you? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, it was. Maybe the outside looked a lot worse than the inside. Yeah, I think the outside was looked a lot worse than the inside. But did my business. You just don't know when you're going to need it again, or the next opportunity comes along. So there's our trusty bus in the background, and I'm not sure which is the driver, but I think he's having a little bit of lunch in there somewhere. All good. So, so far we've been on the road for nearly two hours. I think we've got about another two to two and a half to go. So, yeah, halfway there. I think we've got the halfway point. After our four hour bus trip yesterday on the public bus, which cost us 120 baht each, um, we arrived in Sankula Brewery. So we arrived here around about two o'clock in the afternoon and uh, we just decided to wing it. This is the off season. We just winged it for our accommodation. 
um, we had about three or four choices marked on the map and we knew that they were within walking distance taking into account our um, packs and everything. Um, the first two choices didn't really work out all that well. Um, we were quite surprised that considering that there really aren't any tourists in town, they weren't really prepared to um, drop their price very much. I wasn't going to pay 700 baht for a room with a dirty stained mattress sitting on the floor. So anyway, um, we settled on a place called Chateau de saint Calaburi. So with a name like that, you would expect to be it to be quite French themed, which it is. So our room, we got down to 800 baht, including breakfast and aircon and Wi-Fi. And we can walk to town and we can walk to the Mon Bridge, which is one of the main attractions in the town. So before heading out today, I'll just give you a quick view of the room. Scotty's doing his research for our next stop back at Kanchina Brewery for a few days. So he's busy researching on his phone because that's what we do. So this is our little love shack. I'm not sure. We sort of stuck out on a, a separate wing. And I don't know, this may be the honeymoon suite. But Scott really enjoyed his lovely sleep on the pink sheets. <laughs> Doesn't really suit the bed. So give us away, Scott. Thumbs up. Yep, right. So very basic, but we do have a little fridge, aircon, and a um, just a basic wet room for our bathroom and a TV. So this is the outside of our accommodation of our de, uh, Chateau de saint la Brewery. And then this little bit that sticks out of the building, that's our little love shack. That's our little pink honeymoon suite. Little our little add-on. Just us, just sitting out there, went on the road. So we're setting off on our day's exploration of saint la Brewery and we're just walking down some of the side roads. We're about a 15 minute walk from the, the big Mon Bridge. So yeah, good location. And um, we can also walk in and out of the main town. Not that there's really much at the main town. That's all pretty authentic, pretty real, pretty laid back. So what you're looking at here is the, the, wooden, the wooden structure. This is the longest wooden handmade bridge in Thailand and the second longest in the world. So we're heading to a wat or a temple and this guy here is actually still lying in state inside. He never got cremated and it's been quite a few years. So basically the, the village I read is still is in a state of mourning so they find it um, offensive if you drink alcohol in public because of that. Yes. So Scotty's telling me that this truck was what they used during World War Two. It was either during the war or definitely from the 50s. Yeah. Isn't it? So an old wall truck and I've got so much steel on the back of it oh my god I don't even know how they got it here so they are winching all these steel girders off what could possibly go wrong
other side of the um I'd say the river and the lake, eh, hey, Lindy? Yeah, and the Mond village. We've just talked about it in her blog. Is that um it's the tie on the other side and this is the Mon side. With the wooden big wooden bridge that gets you across here. And further down there is a road bridge. Well the other option is um river boats. So been out to see the pagodas, had a look around and just walking back. Yeah, they come down here we think with the um with a Buddhist monk who's quite revered here. We've just been up to see his um where he's still lying in state. Body. Yeah, his body. They really honour him quite a bit here. And that's why they um haven't gone any further with his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it'd be a good YouTube one. As you can tell we're on our boat trip and we've come across the lake to this um, the temple and um, we are officially in wet season but when the rains really hit which I don't actually think they have yet this temple becomes completely submerged so right up to the top we'll be completely underwater and the structure that we passed earlier that's got the bell tower sticking up out of the water that completely goes underneath the lake as well so over there is completely covered we have seen photos of it where it is completely out of the water and on hard ground so the lake levels certainly go up and down quite a bit